Hey guys and girls, Rob Rebel here, back with another video. Um, I'm going to just talk about why the Marvel Cinematic Universe is way more superior than the DC Universe. Um, if you're wondering where I am, I'm in my car, outside work, on my break. It's currently 3.42am. Um, doing a, doing a, I have to do a night shift tonight because it's the six monthly stock take. Uh, so they got me in doing this. I woke up at 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. Couldn't get asleep before my shift last night. So I'm going, I don't finish till 7 a.m. So by the time I get home, time I go to bed, I would have been up for 24 hours. It's not an enjoyable thing to do. Um, but I'm, I'm powered up. I've um, got some energy, so I thought I'd do a video on my break uh, in the car, in the dark-ish, dark uh, in the middle of a storm, uh, gale force winds, lots of rain, um, see, open up the window, just see the rain, hear the rain. Yep, I'm going to do my window back up there. There we go. Yep, so I'm in the Rebel Wagon. Um, and, you know, I've got an hour to kill. So, I'm, don't trust me, this video is not going to be an hour long. Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, why Marvel's just su superior to DC in the, when it comes to television and movies. Um, I think I, I've, like, covered this. Uh, before in a previous video when I was talking about Marvel Phase 3 uh, when that announcement happened uh, but I'm just going to like just talk about the Marvel franchise as a whole when it comes to uh, multimedia uh, obviously um, when Marvel Studios came about you know the first big hit was Iron Man which broke the box office uh, and you know the Iron Man 2 came out uh, which again was amazing the whole of phase one was amazing, but no one actually knew what it was building towards. Um, Marvel broke broke the uh, the, the post credit scene phenomenon. They were amazing on that. Um, Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Incredible Hulk came out. Um, now, I, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't get into the Marvel movies or comic book movies as a whole, really, until Avengers came out. Yeah, um, and then I didn't even know what was going on then. Uh, I had no idea. I was like, just where was I? Was I living under a stone or something? Was I living under a rock? I I got no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but obviously, I went and saw Avengers at the cinema, and it blew my mind. And then I researched it, and then I saw, I found that all these other movies were connected to it. So when Avengers came out uh, on Blu-ray, I bought the Blu-ray Phase One box set. Uh, which I no longer have because I'm going to get the individual movies, um, and I watched all of them. And obviously, post credit scene, uh, Iron Man one for for Marvel's first movie, it it was great. Um, obviously, you can tell that it was on a slight budget. Uh, it wasn't that big, huge CGI. I mean, it was big and huge in the CGI, but you know, it wasn't that great of a CGI like compared to Iron Man two. Um, Iron Man 2 again was phenomenal um, I remember I remember like all the posters when Iron Man 2 was announced and like the, the posters and like the pictures of Whiplash and Mickey Rourke as Whiplash was getting announced and was going crazy for him and I was like meh well, I, just, I, didn't, I didn't know nothing about comic books then I didn't know nothing about um, Iron Man who was Iron Man I didn't know nothing about the casting, I, I, I didn't care because I, I just, I was in my own little world. What was I into back then? What, so, Iron Man came out in 08. What was I doing in 08? Giant Tesco's in 08. Um, I was working. It was my first year of work. I just left college the previous year. And yeah. yeah. I didn't go to cinema a lot back then. I was just, I was just not part of the world then. I was just like, you know, in solitude in my room. Don't know why. But yeah, Iron Man 2 came out. 
uh, and then at the end of Iron Man 2, the post credit scene, um, if I remember, it was uh, Nick Fury and uh, Tony Stark in a room talking about the Avengers Initiative and saying that Tony Stark is volatile and yada yada and he's not part of the team. Um, childish one lot. Um, I think that was it. I can't remember that well. And then, like, the next one was The Incredible Hulk. Um, <laughs> Hulk 1 was the biggest load of ball in the world. I mean, the dude was luminous green. That was terrible CGI. I mean, was the first Hulk movie done by Marvel Studios on their own? Um, or was it done by uh, an outside company? I'm not too sure. But that was just terribly insane. Insanely crap. Um, but Incredible Hulk uh, fixed that. Um, it was a great story. Uh, the, the the Hulk mold, I think, was a bit bad. I mean, it, it, Hulk looked like looked like a steroided teenager with the whole hair fringe and everything, and um, he looked really thin. I think it wasn't like the bulky kind of hulky gorilla kind of Hulk that we see uh, Mark Ruffalo do. Um, but it was an okay movie. Hulk's not my greatest. He's not my favorite superhero. Uh, but obviously, he's a big part of the Avengers team. So, obviously, he had to be in there. Uh, but it was a good movie nonetheless. Um, and at the end of that movie, you see Tony Stark um, go to General saying, yeah, we need a Hulk. You need to back off from him and all that, which is great. So the first the first uh, step towards the Avengers has now happened. The team's going to come together. Um, and after that, it was Thor. Thor 1. Um Thor was good, but again, I think Thor is the blandest of the Avengers. Um, I mean, I like the Viking Norse mythology and all that. Um, and the move was great and everything. Um, and, you know, we got the build. What was the post credit scene in Thor? I don't even know. I'm lost. I can't remember what the post credit scene four was. Oh, it's bugging me now. What was it? That no, it's gone. I can't get it. Um, but again, Thor, great. And then we went on to Captain America: The First Avenger. Um, I don't know why they chose Captain America as the last superhero movie t before the Avengers. Um, I mean, I get, I get like towards the end, you know, when Captain America was frozen and he came back to modern day and then he was in New York and boom, it's from there, Avengers. Okay, I get that. Uh, post credit scene in the Avengers, we see the Tesseract and we see Loki. So now we know we got our villain, we got Loki. Um, so there's our villain. There's, there's the reason why he's there. He wants the Tesseract. And then at the end of that, we get the Avengers trailer. Um, and then boom, the Avengers. Which blew the box office. Amazing, amazing, great. Great movie. Um, so, you know, so that there from 08 to... When did it come out? 2011? Thor, Iron Man... Yeah, 2011. So that was a three-year build. Six movies, a three-year build. Great. And then in the Avengers, we see Thanos. Um, so we all know that he's the big bad. Um, which is, you know, which he is. Thanos has always been the big bad, the Infinity Gauntlet. He's always been, I would think, the Avengers' main villain. Main arch rival thing. Yep, if that's the way I'm going for. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah. And then from the Avengers, we see the fallout of what happened, like the mental state of people, um, where they go from here, what what does Thor do with Loki, what happens to Loki, how does Captain America fit in with modern day life, how does Iron Man's mental stability go from here, um, Hulk, we didn't see anything, Hulk didn't get a single movie, uh, so we have no idea what's going on with Mr. Banner, uh, excuse me, um, Hawkeye, we didn't see. No one sees Hawkeye. Hawkeye's not important enough to have his own movie. 
so we don't even hear from Hawkeye. Uh, Black Widow is obviously in Captain America 2, so we see that. Um, but yeah. Um, so then we move on to Iron Man 3. Which, again, was a great movie. I, with Iron Man 3, we get to see how Tony Stark, um, his fallout from the Avengers. Uh, obviously, he has a mental breakdown. Um, and he has to try and, like, confront that and get over that. Because, you know, here's this new, vi this new villain that Tony Stark has to uh, fix. Or fix? Uh, defeat. Um, but, obviously, he can't do that uh, when he is in a mental wreck. So, he's trying to get over that. Which is a great, great story. Um... And i got to admit, the post credit scenes in Phase 2 is a really big letdown. I mean, Iron Man 3 didn't have one. Uh, all we saw in Iron Man 3 right at the end is Tony Stark telling Bruce Banner about his life, like a therapist. Um, so I thought that was more of an Easter egg than a post credit scene. Because, oh yeah, we're going to see the Hulk. We're going to see Bruce Banner for like a uh, minute. Uh, so we're like, oh hey, and then it's like, hey, hang on, this is supposed to be like, this is supposed to like tease the next movie because it's, it's not. Um, and then Thor, the Dark World. Uh, once again, Thor to me is the blandest of the superheroes, um, of the Avengers. I mean, it was a good movie, but it wasn't a great movie. I mean, I, you know, I get, like, you know, they're trying to build up Loki again. Because everyone loves Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston as, as Loki is money. It's buys. Um, and I get that. So, and obviously, you know, it, Thor's main uh, villain is his brother. And I'm covering my camera. Sorry about that. Um, so, obviously, they can't get rid of Loki for that reason. So, they have to keep him relevant. Uh, which they have done a good job at doing in the Dark World. Um, I had no idea that Christopher Eccleston was, was Melikeith. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, and Chris Ferguson was the first Doctor in my generation. Uh, so it was great to see him in the Marvelverse. Um, but again, that wasn't great. But we did see another Infinity Gem, which is great, the Ether. Um, the post credit scene in Dark World uh, was a bit better. We saw the Collector, and we saw where they are putting the Ether, the Infinity Gem. Because uh, obviously the Tesseract's on Asgard, so they can't keep two at the same place, because that'd be stupid. So they give one to collect to look after. Which is okay, that's great. But that was more of a purge credit scene um, to tease what they did with the Infinity Gem. It wasn't a purge credit scene to tease what they what was next. And next was Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier. Uh, now, I read the comic book The Winter Soldier before it came out. Uh, and I thought they did a good job at putting that on this big screen. Um... I love how Captain America has now adapted to modern day life. Um, we get to see the Falcon, which I think they did a really good job at. I think Captain America was the best Phase 2 movie. Um, obviously, excluding uh, excluding Guardians of the Galaxy. Because um, Guardians of the Galaxy are like brand new, brand new superheroes in Phase 2. Um, but I think that had the more action. But what I love about Captain America 2 is not only did we, we, we saw something new. We saw something fresh. We didn't see a fallout from the Avengers. We saw a completely darker uh, side to S.H.I.E.L.D., which is Hydra. Um, and what I love about that is that then bled into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I love. Um, I mean, Thor the Dark World bled into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but that only did it for one episode. Uh, the series as a whole, uh, Captain America's storyline bled through like the la the second half of Agents of Shield, which to me is amazing. Um, that that the the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Marvel Television Universe are the same universe. That is how you get buys. That is how you control the TV. That is how you control the movies. Um, you know, but you know, let's get back to talking about the movies. Um, and then that post credit, did, did that post credit scene? Yeah. And the early Captain America 2, uh, we see the Tesser, the, the Loki staff, uh, being controlled by Hydra. And we see Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Um, which again, that's a big, that is, that is a way better teaser towards the Avengers, but they didn't tease towards Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, 
which is weird. So Iron Man 3 didn't have a teaser. 4 2 had a teaser, which is more of a teaser towards Guardians because we saw the collector. So they've jumped Captain America to tease Guardians, and then we got to Captain America, and they didn't tease Guardians, but they teased the Avengers. So they've jumped one to tease next, and they jumped another to tease next, which is weird. Um, and then we go on to Guardians, and wow. Just wow. How, how can... Guardians is amazing. Because obviously now we've seen, like, likes of Captain America, Thor... Iron Man on our screens, so we're on, we're on 2013, 2008, so five, five, six years. So six years we've seen those characters, and now we've got to know them, and we know how they work. They've brought in a completely new set of superheroes into the MCU, and everyone loves them, because it's great. And what we see is Thanos, Thanos is there. Thanos, 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 Thanos. How you pronounce it? Um, so now we now we got a connection. We know that the Avengers' big bad is Thanos. We know the Guardians' main rival is Thanos. We're gonna get a team up eventually, and it's gonna absolutely rock. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. Um, and you know, people start absolutely going crazy at this point. They go, "Oh my God, they're gonna do this, and they're gonna do that, and it's gonna be amazing." And it can be out of this world. Oh my god! And it's true, it is. Because then Marvel did that press conference announcing phase three. And you know, and then they, they released that, that teaser trailer uh on Infinity War, and it blew everyone's mind. Because in phase one we had six movies, in phase two we've got six movies. One, two, three, four, five, six. And but in phase three, we've got Captain America three. Black Panther, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, 4 3. I can't move this hand because I'm holding my camera. Inhumans. Adventures Part 1 and 2. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's nine movies. Nine movies in phase three. And I mean, like. So, not only has Marvel got control of the box office at between 2008 and to present day, they've just announced every movie to come out until 2020. And they've just, they've just released a, a great build-up video towards the Infinity War with Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. So, you know he's going to get the Infinity Gauntlet. You know that there's a story that's going to progress. You know that, that another... I think two gems is still got to be seen in the MCU for Thanos to get. So you need to know, okay, where are these other two gems? Who's got these other two gems at present? How are the other two gems going to come into play um, with the current superheroes? You know, these are the things that start bubbling through your head. You don't know. Um, and you're like, all right, so between here and there, what are the stories that are going to happen? We already know the Captain America 3 story. It's Civil War. Civil War was an amazing comic book. It changed the the... the, the the, the Marvel Universe, um, that, to me, they shouldn't even give that a Captain America name. They should just make that, make that, in my opinion, Avengers 3. And then Infinity War, Avengers 4. Because um, I don't know, because obviously Iron Man's confirmed that he's going to be in Civil War, but Civil War affected the whole entire Marvel Universe. I mean... How's that going to work if it's just Captain America and Iron Man in Civil War? I think Black Panther's been confirmed for Civil War, but I'm not too sure. Um, uh, obviously, Black Black Widow's going to be involved in, in Civil War, because Black Widow needs to be somewhere amongst the MCU, so she doesn't have a solo title. Uh, and, of course, you know, she pops up. She popped up in Iron Man 2, um, and then she progressed in Captain America 2. Um, but, again, you know, this is just, like, this is just speculation, and your mind starts to just bubble and you know, come all these ideas and your imagination starts running wild, like, oh my god, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and then, like, all the rumours start coming out, and like, oh my god, and, like, nerdgasms everywhere, nerdgasms, um, but, and, you know, it's, it is amazing, and, like, you know, Avengers 2 comes out in three months, uh, we get it a week before the States, uh, which is great. We always get a mo we always get the Marvel movies like a week or two before the states, which is great because the US gets usually everything first. Um, I think so. The Marvel movies mainly get shot in England. Don't know why. 
Um, and Avengers 2 is going to be amazing because, you know, from the trailers, you see the teams breaking down. You see they're building towards Civil War. Um, I haven't read the Age of Ultron book yet. I'm trying to get a hold of the copy of the issues of the comic book. Um, I'm missing issue one, two, and four. And then I've got the whole set and I can read it. Hopefully, I'll get them before the movie comes out. <coughs> My car shaking because of the wind. Um, and, you know, again, it looks amazing. And again, they're, you know, I can't wait to see that movie and I can't wait to see the, the post credit scene because you don't know is it going to be Thanos again? Um, is it going to be building towards Civil War? Is it going to be a teaser for Ant Man? We don't know. Um, but you know, it, it, it's a great time to be a Marvel fan because Marvel have the plate. They have the ball for movies. Um, but, you know, like I'm saying, when once Infinity War Part 2 comes out in 2020, which, you know, from 2008, what is that? That's a 12-year build. A 12-year build for a movie. I mean, you know, Harry Potter had... What did Harry Potter have? A 10-year build? 11-year build. I think Lost of Stone came out in 01... The last movie came out in 2011. So that's a 10-year bill for Harry Potter. And they had a, you know, a movie every year. And But Harry Potter wasn't building... Well, it, it was building. But every story had its own... Every film had its own story. And it did progress throughout. The whole... Yeah. Yeah. But with the MCU... It's building and building and building and building for so long. Because you've got to think, Marvel bring out two movies a year. So it's building, you know, a long while. And you know that Infinity War is going to be absolutely off the chain. It's going to be the best movie ever. Because they have to split into two movies. Do you know why? Because they have to involve Captain America. They have to involve Black Widow. They have to involve Hawkeye, Iron Man, Hulk, um, Thor... Um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant Man, Black Panther, um, fucking Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, um, the Inhumans. I mean, that's a lot of screen time to share between all them people. But you you know that the fight scene is going to be absolutely insane, and it's just going to be nerdgasms everywhere. Nerdgasm, copyright. I'm copying that term, nerdgasm. <laughs> um, um, but that's that is why Marvel own it, uh, and you know whatever's going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to bleed into Agents of Shield because then Agents of Shield, Marvel then own the TV because if it's happening in Agents of Shield, if it's happening in the Marvel Universe, it's happening in Agents of Shield, and in Agents of Shield you see the background of what's happening. Captain America might deal with the main story, you know, of what's happening uh, at Shield with Hydra. But it's Coulson and his team, which are picking up all the pieces, you know, and they're they're dealing they're dealing it with it from behind the scenes. And when Agents of Shield isn't on the TV, Agent Carter's on the TV. Now Agent Carter debuted last week. Um, I love it. It's amazing. I absolutely love Jarvis. Jarvis is an amazing character, um, and I, I just love to see the origins of Jarvis because uh, obviously Jarvis is uh, Iron Man's AI uh, robot. Uh, thing thing a magic and to see the origins of Jarvis is great and the character of Jarvis is just amazing um so when Agents of Shield is on once that takes a mid-season break Agent Carter's on and then when that takes a mid-season break Agents of Shield comes back for the rest of the season and then when that season ends Agent Carter's back to finish off her season and then when that's over Agents of Shield is back you've just controlled the television for an entire year well done Marvel well done but not only that not only is Marvel controlling the television, not only is Marvel controlling the movies, Marvel is then controlling online streaming. Come April, Daredevil. Daredevil, Netflix have got the rights to Daredevil, Jennifer Jones, uh, Luke Cage, and The Defenders. That is four television series on Netflix. Netflix original television series are on there. So now Marvel have con are controlling online streaming services, the box office... And the television. Fucking well done, Marvel. Well done. I mean, you know, Marvel. I've got. They've got their. They've got their fingers in pies everywhere. 
and everyone is excited for anything. Marvel could say, yeah, we're going to do this. And we're going to charge, you know, this much for this online episode. You know, they, they could make a series just for iTunes downloads and charge. Then then they would control the iTunes charts. You know, you ever think about that? I mean, what 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 else could Marvel control? I mean, when it comes to DC, oh DC, DC know Warner Brothers knows that Marvel have control of the box office. So what DC have done? They made Man of Steel, which was an alright movie. Don't get me wrong, I didn't mind it. It wasn't great. And then everyone's like, oh yeah, Man of Steel 2, Man of Steel 2, Man of Steel 2 was confirmed. Oh no, we're going to change it now to Batman versus Superman. What? Wait, what? Where's the build? There's no build for it. Avengers had a build. Avengers had a brilliant build. You you have no build to, towards Batman versus Superman. What What is this? You just, oh okay, here's Superman. Here's Man of Steel 2. And we're going to throw Batman in there. What? Maybe you could throw Batman in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait, wait, that's not it. We're going to throw Wonder Woman in there as well. Hang on. DC, no Marvel have the box office, so DC are rushing a Justice League movie just so they can get buys. DC aren't having a build. DC are literally doing, here's a clusterfuck, buy. What do you mean, buy? Buy the movie. Well, no, this is, you know that that movie is going to be shit. It's going to be a poor build because they, they've got too much to fit into it. You know, it's like, okay, Man of Steel. Man of Steel is, you know, Superman's going about his thing. I'm Batman. Wait, what? What the fuck are you doing here? I'm here to defeat him. Why? What do you mean, what do you, what do you mean why? Well, why? Why are you here? This is my movie. It's, it's exactly my point. You know, and there's like, okay, he's like, hey, 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 hey guys, like, who are you? Oh, I'm Wonder Woman. Why are you here? I'm invading your movie. Go get your own movie. I can't. It's after yours. No, you don't do that. You have a Superman movie. You have a Wonder Woman movie. You have a Batman movie. Then you have a team up movie. Because then, you know, every character has their base to team up. You know, they've got their background. They've got their origin stories. Blah, blah. Team up. Because then you know the characters. I mean, of course, everyone knows those characters anyway, but that's not the point when you're making the movie. You don't just do a clusterfuck movie and then the characters go their separate ways. I mean, Batman, like, obviously you had the original Batman movies, the original four, and then you had Nolan's Batman movies, uh, the trilogy, and now you've got this new, the Ben Affleck Batman invading Superman's movie, and you're just like, all right, well, what's this guy's story? And of course, everyone knows the Batman story, but this specific one, what's his story? How is he portrayed?